Okay, we are back, and we're talking about niche hockey equipment today, and you want a confession out of me right now, I understand. Yes, well, he's been regaling us with stories of stinky hockey equipment, so well, go yes. for it. Helen. In my teens, I had my own hockey gear. I played until I was about 16, then I didn't play for a few years. I took it up again in my early 20s. I did not own gear, and I borrowed one of my good friend's gear, and uh, apparently some other guy had borrowed it as well, and it was dropped off from house to house, and the stuff was never ever, ever, ever cleaned, and uh, I'm, sure, so like you, uh, Howard, I'm sure it could, it could play on its own, <laughs> that gear. Anyway, we are going to talk about this with uh, Steve Silver. He is the president of Sani Sport, Inc. He has a business here designed to clean up stinky hockey bags and get rid of uh, deadly disease as well. Great to have you with us, Steve. Thanks for being here. Yeah. So did you have the same problem I had? Uh, in essence, everyone who plays hockey has the same problem you have. I don't think you're uh, particularly special in that sense. <laughs> I think 30-odd uh, million Canadians uh, who uh, enjoy the game have that issue. But um, um, other than the comedic uh, point of, of the stinky hockey equipment and being passed from player to player, for example, there's a, a component which is really injury prevention because the, the smell that you're um, all too familiar with is really caused by bacteria. And that bacteria can be deadly and um, oftentimes enter a person's uh, system through cuts and abrasions and so on and so forth. So what we try and do with our technology is uh, sanitize the equipment so that that risk is minimized and subsequently a nice byproduct is that the smell is uh, pretty much taken care of as well. Okay, so explain what the product is. It's just kind of like a refrigerator for yeah. equipment, though. Yeah, it's sort of, uh, aesthetically it looks like a refrigerator and um, in essence the equipment is placed in the machine, uh, doors are closed and a button is pressed and in a 16 minute cycle um, we will significantly reduce the bacteria uh, as well. The odor is a nice byproduct, as I said. And then the, um, the user of the equipment subsequently then has a set of sanitized equipment that is free of this harmful bacteria. And he or she can continue on, um, not having to smell it, but obviously not having to be fearful of the repercussions of uh, various bacterial infections that can arise. So, so how prevalent have these infections been, which I guess leads us to the market question here as well. Yeah, they, they, they are very, very prevalent. Um, we as lay people don't really hear about them that much other than when they kick in in the NHL and a player who makes five or six million dollars a year is on the shelf for a few days and people want to know what's going on. The reality is that at the minor hockey league level, level the beer league hockey players and so on and so forth, old people like you and I who play from time to time. <laughs> hey, watch uh, yeah, it, buddy. Yeah, those, those, uh, it's prevalent in all those markets. And um, so the, the treatment of the equipment, whether, whether you're um, Mike Camilleri or whether you're uh, Timmy playing minor league hockey here in uh, suburban Toronto, you, you have to address the issue because it really is um, uh, prevalent and very, very commonplace. It's just uh, unfortunate that people are not all that in tune to it. So how does, the, how, does the, how does the equipment actually work in terms of getting rid of the bacteria? I read that it uses ozone. How yeah. does ozone kill bacteria? Well, we have a patented process that we developed when we came out with this machine nine years ago uh, whereby we generate ozone and ozone is very effective at killing bacteria. So for example, ozone is in our water filtration plants throughout North America that rids the bacteria from the water before we drink it and shower with it. So we've taken that concept to a certain extent, um, uh, fabricated ozone, which is actually a natural gas that comes down from the sky after a rainstorm, and um, put it into this technology to um, eliminate the bacteria, the viruses, and the pathogens that are in uh, protective sports equipment, whether it be hockey, um, uh, football. Um, we have our machines in the prison system throughout Canada as well for police officers and so on and so forth. So the protective equipment really has that common denominator that has to be addressed. And, and so how big can you grow this business? Well, um, we're hoping to grow it uh, um, uh, quite big. As I said, we are a hockey company in essence. We manufacture other types of machinery for the hockey industry. And that was sort of the genesis of this machine. Um, uh, but uh, now as a hockey company, we've become a sports company because we deal with the National Football League and the Canadian Football League. We've, as I said, um, deal with Department of Homeland Security in the U.S. and law enforcement, so we're, we're um, penetrating the military and law enforcement markets as well. And uh, we really think that the uh, opportunities are, uh, are limitless because, in essence, anything 
uh, that has the same common issue can be dealt with with our technology. And what kind of uptake do you have in the mass market, so to speak, outside of, let's say, sp particular agencies or leagues? I mean, can you do can you do this uh, by walking down the street to, I don't know, some kind of store? Or yeah, something? Our, our, core, our core market and our core uh, foundation in terms of our clients <laughs> are the average sporting goods retailer. So whereas 27 out of 30 NHL teams have it and use it in a certain way because, as I said, they're trying to keep their multi-million dollar players on the ice to score goals and, and win Stanley Cups, um, you and your family can go to a local a sporting goods store, um, pay somewhere in the vicinity of $25 or $30 to have the exact same treatment done, and um, the uh, retailers with our, our technology are, are throughout North America. Do you need capital to grow further? Um, we don't necessarily need capital to grow further. What we need is we need education, we need um, familiarity, we need people to become aware of the fact that this is really an injury prevention issue. And just for example, with, with law enforcement, for example, as we've recently spoken to various police forces and governments and correctional facilities, um, it's like, where have you been all my life? Because we as police officers and security personnel wear our, our bulletproof vests and our SWAT team equipment, but mm. they smell and we don't do anything with them and we can't do anything with them, so it's a, it's a nice, uh, nice byproduct of the uh, situation. Okay, and I, asked, I have to ask a very female yeah, question. Absolutely. What does it smell like when it comes out? <coughs> it smells very neutral when okay. it comes out. Can you put um, flavors in there? We do actually, well, we do actually have a flavor, for lack of a better term. We have an after spray bactericide that helps the treatment last longer, that has a cherry or bubble gum type spray, oh, so there you go. That's good. Uh, but if, if the retailers decide not to use that, and even many of the NHL teams use that, to be honest with you, um, the smell is actually quite, quite neutral. Yeah. And about a minute left here, yeah. uh, just following up on that other point about getting the word out to these folks who have wondered where you've been yeah. all these years. Yeah. What kind of marketing campaign are you uh, involved in or do you have planned? Yeah, well basically uh, what, what we've done recently and what we're going to continue to do as time goes on is align ourselves with partners, with distributors, people who are much more expert in their fields than we are. We've uh, recently um, uh, done an agreement with uh, Shut Sports in the U.S., who's the largest um, manufacturer of face masks and football helmets. And so they have access to college teams, high schools in the U.S., and so on that we obviously wouldn't have access to. So that's our, our prime focus for the next little bit, aligning ourselves and partnering ourselves with, uh, with people who've got access. Is a target audience, uh, your target market, mostly in the U.S., or where are you mostly selling? Right? Um, mostly in North America in general. We do have um, some of our technology in various parts of Europe, but for the most part, um, the States is probably the big push as time goes forward, yeah. Okay, great. Well, thanks very much. Thank Appreciate you. you coming in. Thank you. That was Steve Silver. He is president of Sani Sport, and that's it for Midday Markets. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for the show, please send us an email at middaymarkets at bnn.ca.